Well, hello. Uh, welcome to Startup Mexico. Um, I'm going to tell you, I don't know if you guys can put my conference. Miriam, can you put the slides? Perfect. So, um, I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about prejudice and how people view Mexico and uh, what exactly we're trying to change. I did a search uh, in Google Images a while back and uh, the first thing I put was American and this is what comes out when you click American and uh, as you can see it's all about pride and the, the flag and you that America mm. But it's, you know, it's, it, the, the imagery is very clear. And then I put um, British, and you can see that it's very similar. It's flags, it's queen, it's pride. Um, and then actually, I don't have Canadian here, but I put Canadian and it's exactly the same thing. It's the flag, and it's, uh, you know, the queen, and pride, and maybe some Canadian cities. Then I went to Italy, and I put Italian, and again, same imagery, flags, uh, you know, the country, Venice, a guy holding a pizza, of course. Um, then I put German, similar imagery, of course you have the Frankfurters and the flags, and a guy kicking another for some reason, and beer. But still, you know, it's about pride, it's about flags. Then I put Russian, similar imagery. You have the bear and the president and the flags and a very sexy Russian. Uh, and then I put, so when I go to Latin America, I put Brazilian. And again, you see flags in different places, but flags. Uh, and beautiful people and soccer and pride. And then I put Argentinian, very similar. Flags, beautiful people, pride, soccer food, etc. When you put Mexican, this is... Now, I'll be the first one to admit that this is part of Mexico. Uh, but I'm the first one to tell you that this is not Mexico. This is just a little part of it. Mexico is an incredible culture. Uh, if, you, if you, for example, I don't know if you know, but you speak over six languages. Every city you go to, the culture is different, the dress is different, the food is different. Um, and this is just the rural culture. If you consider the city culture, the metropolitan culture, this is Mexico City, arguably one of the most modern and largest cities in the world. Um, and uh, with an incredible architecture. I mean, if you, if you go around the city, and I urge you to go around, you'll see architecture that spans centuries. Um, and, you know, millennia, if you consider, for example, the pyramid. Um, and Mexico City is not the only city. Several great cities that I urge you to visit if you have a chance eventually. Um, top left, you have Monterrey. Uh, bottom left, you have Guadalajara. In the middle, you have uh, Merida. In the middle, uh, well, in the bottom right, you have uh, Veracruz. And then you, we have some magical towns. We have a lot of magical towns in Mexico. They're, they're actually magical towns. People of uh, Guanajuato or uh, San Cristóbal de las Casas. And these are incredible places to visit. And uh, m most visitors know the beaches. Uh, but we have a lot more to offer, uh, both cultural and... Uh, for example, did you know that Mexico has a canyon that is actually bigger and deeper than the Grand Canyon. It's called the Copper Canyon in Chihuahua. Or uh, the Agua Azul Waterfalls, which is considered the best reef, the second best reef that I've been told, right after Australia. Uh, but we don't have a shark, so I would consider uh, Palenque. Are we or the pyramids, don't know, right? Well, you can't hear me, just let me know. A ver. Sorry. So, um, or the pyramids of, of Palenque, it's incredible. It's in Chiapas, 
uh, you're walking around the jungle, and then all of a sudden you see a, an incredible pyramid in the middle. So I urge you to visit all these places, and there are tons more in Mexico. And of course, culturally, Mexico has given the world a lot more than just tequila and mariachi. Uh, we have people in every art. We have embroidery, and we have, uh, a, you know, muralists, and we have a, a musicians and painters. And for example, the one in the middle, in the bottom middle, is a, a museum that's underwater for sculptures. That's called the Musa Museum, and it's amazing. Uh, it's near Cancun. And uh, just look at what we've done in movies in the last decade. Uh, you know, we not only have we gone a lot of Oscars, but these are just some examples of movies that have been either directed or produced or filmed by Mexicans. Um, so again, we have a lot more to offer. And by the way, for you Canadians, this is not Mexican food. Uh, I, I will agree that chipotles in the U.S. does it a little bit better than Taco Bell, uh, but it's still not Mexican food. And if you heard this word, this is a word that I've never heard before in my life. Uh, I heard it the first time when I was in college, and my roommate came up to me and he said that there's chimichangas in the cafeteria, and I thought that we were being attacked. I never heard this word before. This is not Mexican. Mexican food is incredible. It's incredibly varied. Uh, it's a world heritage. I really recommend that you eat some Mexican food while you're here. I can guarantee you that the people that have tried it are salivating right now. Um, and the best part about Mexico, in my opinion, is that you'll always feel welcome here. You'll always feel like we really want you to be here. And Mexicans really very hospitable. We love having visitors. We love treating you like royal. We love having you visit our cities. So what has happened in the last 10 years in Mexico? Why all of a sudden Mexico and Latin America, because this applies to most Latin American countries, has all of a sudden become like a spectacular ecosystem for entrepreneurs? Well, for starters, in Mexico, the government has put a lot of money into initiatives to help entrepreneurs, to help researchers and developers. Um, just to give an, an example, there's 182 technology parks that have been built in the last 10 years in Mexico. The, the supply is so much that they're almost empty, but they're there and they're ready. The, the, the infrastructure is already there. Um, Mexico has signed commercial treaties with over 65% of the world. We are the most connected country commercially. And look at where we are. We're right in the middle between a great market like North America and an unexplored yet amazing market like Latin America. And we can connect them both. Uh, we have a great relationship, at least pre-Trump, with the U.S. Uh, hopefully it will remain that way. Most immigrants to Mexico, uh, to, to the U.S. are Mexican. Most visitors to Mexico are American. And every single event, award, entrepreneurship program, um, you know, any incubator, accelerator from all over the world has come to Mexico. We have things here that have come from Finland and Spain and France and Germany and, and Britain and, of course, the U.S. And, and some even Canadian ones. And, but Mexico didn't wait. And we created our own incubators, our own accelerators, our own awards. So hardly a day goes by in Mexico where entrepreneurs are not meeting investors or where designers are not meeting uh, you know, engineers. And this is what makes a place like Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley, this networking. Talent abounds in Mexico. We actually have a demographic bonus right now, which means that over half of the population is under 29 years old. The median is 27. And under half of the population is in working age. So this is a, a very strange position for a country where talent, young talent now abounds. We are graduating more engineers per capita than almost everywhere in the world. So again, tons of engineers, but not just engineers. Uh, school enrollment has more than tripled in Mexico in the past decade. So we're graduating more marketeers, more business people, more designers. The creative class in Mexico is growing really fast. And look at the image of Mexico. Six years ago, you would talk about Mexico, you would think about corruption, you would think about the you know, war on drugs. 
I'm not saying this is over, but it, it has improved. And today, look at the headlines. The next Steve Jobs, the new China, the Aztec Tiger, the rise of Mexico. Mexico has a chance to be the world's great power. Move over Brazil, here comes Mexico. I mean, everybody is really optimistic on Mexico. And I think Andres Oppenheimer puts it better. He says that the whole world is optimistic on Mexico, except Mexicans. And I think that if we believe it ourselves, we're going to do much better. Um, and finally, look at the... These were the, the venture capitalists in Mexico in 2008. This is 2012. This is 2015. Uh, we've invested more money in venture capital in 2015 than in the 20 years previous in this country. So it's growing really fast. And of course, all of this is resulting in an explosion of startups. Um, just Startup Mexico, our, ourselves, we have evaluated over 6,000 startups in the past two years. Uh, and there's initiatives that have evaluated over 80,000 startups in a year. So, so there's a ton of projects coming out of Mexican universities and out of Mexican young people. So to finalize this section, let me just tell you that Mexico is right now, right here. We're about to transform, and we have the opportunity to transform our economy from that based on efficiency to one based, you know, on transformation, on, 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 a, on a manufacturing, to an economy based on knowledge and innovation. And if we can do this change, the opportunities are going to be huge for Mexicans and for people that do uh, business in Mexico. So, because of all these reasons, we created Start of Mexico. Our idea was to create a place where you have entrepreneurs, you have academy, industry, and government, you have seed funds, and you have all sorts of services and mentors for the startups. And I mean all sorts. Designers, uh, lawyers, accountants, uh, everything that a, that a small company needs. And that has an exit to North America and an exit to Europe. Why? Because we need exit strategies and the Mexican market doesn't have mergers and acquisition and the, and the stock market is not that active. So in essence we built a complete ecosystem, one that has an academy, an incubator, an accelerator, some social programs, etc., all in one place. The vision is to put Mexico in the middle and create bridges with North America, with Europe, uh, and once we have established these bridges, then we can invite our Latin American friends to come through Mexico to North America and to come through Mexico to Europe. And then we can invite our American, Canadian, and European friends to come through Mexico to Latin America. And I think that our, the correct model for Mexicans, then we can invite anybody else. Our correct model for Mexicans is a, an innovation bridge. And this is where we are trying to excel, uh, to become a bridge between uh, countries and continents. After two years, uh, over 6,200 projects have registered. We've helped 472 projects. Um, we've created 181 companies here. Seven are dead. The rest are still alive, although I expect this number to grow. 139 of these companies have graduated, two are still incubating, and 30% very large number, which I really admire and I hope it grows, are led by women. Uh, out of all these companies, 35 have been funded already by external sources. They've raised over $6 million in funding, and 32 have received government grants as well. Uh, 84 out of the 139 that have graduated are already trading products and services. We've generated 487 jobs, and they've sold over $13 million dollars. Uh, in accumulated sales between all of them. Remember that this company is the oldest, is two years old. We've also established a bridge uh, program called The Bridge, where 20 companies from Latin America are now here, uh, finishing their year of acceleration in Mexico or soft landing. And we've also received uh, 26 other companies from Peru, from Argentina, and from Chile. We also represent these three contests, Seed Stars World Challenge, uh, the Challenge Cup, 
and slush, where the finals happen here in this stage, and the winners actually go to Switzerland or Washington or Finland. Slush is happening right now in November. There's several programs hosted here, such as Campus Party or the, uh, you know, the, the Founders Institute or Angel Labs, etc. Some important companies have set their home here in, in Startup Mexico. We've generated over 400 events in two years, including companies like Google and, uh, you know, Evernote and Microsoft or, or universities like Stanford or Harvard. Uh, we've got some awards. That's not important. Um, a lot of VIPs have visited us. Uh, when a dignitary visits Mexico, we are part of the tour. We've opened already three campuses, Merida uh, in the Yucatan Peninsula, in the Bajio in the middle of the country, and of course this one in Mexico City. We have the magazine uh, for the entrepreneurs in Mexico called the Start of Mexico magazine. We have a shop that sells only entrepreneurs' Uh, products and services, and we're creating our own fund, which will be ready by January. So we ourselves are going to start investing in these companies. And just finally, our idea is as follows. We want this to be our main campus. We want to open a bunch of campuses in different parts of the country. The best companies are going to come to this campus. We're going to start opening campuses in Sao Paulo, Lima, and other places in Latin America. We want the best projects to come to this campus. And then we're going to open a campus in the U.S., or we are actually talking to the province of uh, Ontario in Toronto to see if we can open a campus there and send the best projects there uh, and actually work towards our bridge model. So if I leave you with anything, I leave you with my information, I leave you with a phrase that I love, which is that there's nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come I think time has come for the world to know that innovation doesn't just happen in English-speaking countries or in Silicon Valley, that it happens also in Latin America. And for us in Latin America to truly create more competitive countries that are more equitable and just for our people through entrepreneurship. Thank you.